You are tricking for a date, for getting food and drinks. Look at how far we've come, boys. Now we are in the age of O fans. We're in the age of 100 plus body counts by 21. So what exactly is dating? Now the definition is pretty simple. It's a stage in the romantic relationship in which two individuals engage in an activity together, most often with the intention of evaluating each other's suitability. It falls into the category of courtship consisting of social events carried out by the couple. Now, how does that translate into real world application? Well, over in India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, as many of you guys know, arranged marriages are pretty common. That being said, love marriages or the idea that people should actually meet up and see if there's any compatibility is becoming more common. Over in Japan, there's a service called Omiya in which the parents hire a matchmaker. The matchmaker takes resumes, pictures, then finds what they believe to be a suitable person. And then the parents meet and they all agree. And then they pressure the couples to actually get married. Now, Singapore took it to a whole other level. We're talking the social development network, the SDN, whose sole purpose is to promote marriage. In fact, the state funded SDN touts marriage as what should be a person's number one life goal. My favorite though, is how the Naigatan people of Ethiopia do it. According to their traditions, there are only four paths to marriage. There's arranged marriage, supervised courtship, there is inheritance, and abduction. I mean, imagine that. You just went out for a beer and all of a sudden you got a hood over your head and next thing you know, you are at the altar marrying this woman you've never seen before. But seriously, Jess, when it comes to dating, most people will tell you it sucks. And the research backs this up. 10 years ago, it was bad. Now, 47% of Americans say that it is even worse than it was a decade ago. In fact, since the Me Too movement, 65% of men say dating is harder. And the women weren't far behind. Oh, look at this one. Public sees challenges for men dating in the era of the Me Tree. Percent saying increased focus on harassment and assault over the last few years has made it 65 harder for men. Wow. 43. So it's, it's had a negative impact on both men and women. That movement did. Hmm. 43% of those polled said that it had become more difficult. So why is dating dying? Specifically, what's making it disappear? Now, the idea of dating is a fairly new construct, even in the Western world. In fact, the word goes back to an 1896 column in the Chicago record. A columnist named George Ada was writing about the working class and their lives. And he was talking about a guy named Artie and what was going on with his relationships. Apparently, his girlfriend was losing interest in him. And whenever he confronted her about this, he said, simply said, I suppose the other boys are filling in all my dates. Now it took a few decades for the word to stick, but women were out on their own engaging with men and these men would buy them food and drinks or gifts. And in the eyes of the authorities, this made them whores. Basically, they view this as the same as turning a trick. Now by 1910, girls going out on dates like this were known as charity girls. Whoa, do you hear that? In 1910, you were considered a charity girl. A tr you were a whore. You were tricking for a date for getting food and drinks. Look at how far we've come, boys. Now we are in the age of O fans. We're in the age of 100 plus body counts by 21. Wow, dude. If women in 1910, the suffragettes, all the way up to the 50s femmes, saw where we would end up today with women's equality, I wonder what they would think about it. I wonder because they didn't take any money for their favors. They were just simply out to have a good time. In fact, there were reports of prostitutes in the 1920s complaining about these charity girls because they were putting them out of business. Doesn't that echo to the present today where adult entertainers were bitching about OFAN's models taking their work away from them? Isn't that, isn't that crazy, boys? History repeats itself. The charity girls were pissing off the real prostitutes back in the 1910s. In the 1920s and 30s, we saw the rise of the shop girl, a single woman working in a department store, living in a city, a larger place where, you know, she lived on her own and she was free to make up her mind who she was going to engage with. All the men that were coming up, buying things in her store, courting her, maybe asking her out. Yeah, she was kind of setting her own agenda. Now, the 1940s, as you know, marked by World War II. And guess what? Women are now in the workplace. They've got a taste of what it's like to actually make pretty good money and things never went back. The 1950s, yeah, we still stuck to a lot of traditions, dating and courtship. Dude, once you open P Pandora's box, you can't close it anymore. This new style of the West, our, our culture is permanent, bro. It's only going in the same direction of going into hedonism, more debauchery, more degeneracy. We're not, we're not having a conservative shift. It's not going to happen. It, for the masses, there may be a 
There may be a certain section of society that goes more conservative, but the vast majority are going to keep being more progressive. Chip was still around, but we saw it really relax in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. Now, taking a step back, let's talk about marriage. Throughout history, marriage has been an alliance between families, different levels, but in general, you stood within your class. If you were high class, you married other high class people. If you were lower class, yeah, you didn't really have much chance to get out of there. You were stuck with people in your class because everyone knew where people stood. As such, arranged marriages for most of human history were pretty much the norm. In fact, the idea of a romantic relationship didn't even exist in marriage. I mean, in the 12th century book, The Art of Courtly Love, it stated, true love can have no place between husband and wife. That being said, love, of course, did exist in some arranged marriages. And if you look at arranged marriages as a whole, Boy, what a different concept. Love has no place in a marriage. Imagine that system. Everything arranged a class system where families combined together all their resources in order to propagate a higher social standing. Huh, yeah, that was what the union was for back in the day. Javi, thanks so much for the two, brother. Happiness levels do go up over time because people approach this as, hey, we've got to make this work. We're stuck together versus a lot of love marriages start off really happy, but then yeah, it wears off after a couple Wow. And that's a really good point, huh? When you have an arranged marriage, it is a little bit out of your control because it's arranged, right? It's the families making the decision for you. Like we see in shows like Game of Thrones and all that, right? It's just your duty to your family, to your bloodline. This was the choice granted for you and you have to accept it and you come together and you have to make the best of it. And the beginning of your marriage is the absolute lowest point because this is when you don't know somebody. And this is when you're getting to know your significant other and building a rapport and a legacy and learning to live amongst one another as opposed to the way we do it today in reverse where we enter a marriage in the in the absolute peak of your relationship has has passed years before when you guys were having sex like bunnies when you were still in the honeymoon phase in the first year you met when all these things that were going on in the beginning that was making the lust at the forefront of your relationship is now gone now the happiest part of your relationship has waned, and now you're entering into the hardest part of your relationship, marriage, and settling into the normal, the new normal of husband and wife. And now you're just battling to maintain a little bit of happiness. Boy, oh boy, anybody with a successful marriage tells you it's not easy. It's hard work. It's a union of two people that have to make sacrifices, come together, and meet each other in the middle. That's, that's, do you think that message is pushed on society today? No way, dude. You're a strong, independent queen and you deserve to have it all. If your man can't buy you this, if he won't take you out there, if he doesn't bring you flowers, he ain't the man for you. Next swipe, next swipe. Nuts. Years and uh, happiness levels go down, and they are more likely to lead to divorce. That being said, throughout recorded history, there has been the existence of matchmakers. Nowadays, a lot of us think, oh, I would never use a service like that. Here's the thing is that this used to be the norm. And those matchmakers, they weren't always like a professional matchmaker. Oh, oftentimes, it was your mother, it was the family unit. It uh, seven sons, I saw your comment. Marriage sounds like hell. It sounds like hell to you. But you have to understand in the context in which it was invented, it was two families that you still had your extended family behind you, supporting you, and then the other family supports you as well. And you combine assets and your kids will have a better life than either family had. You get ahead. And this is how you were born these all powerful families that control the world now. It's just that's they, it's like step by step by step by step, generation by generation, they kept accumulating wealth and power through marriage, through unions. This is how poor people stay poor. They don't get married for power anymore. They, they've essentially at the top propagated a message to the bottom, everybody, that you should be marrying for love because that's a brand new concept instead of coming together for family. Because that's what the union was for. Family, to make kids, to further the bloodlines. You literally, by having children together, got access to assets, to rights, to land, to property, etc. It's wild, bro, what a good marriage does. Marriage is now just a sole benefit of the wealthy because they are able to bring 
uh, two separate uh, families with significant assets together that are able to further their agenda in society. Unlike poor people that are like, yeah, it's queen, street queen, I don't need nobody. I'm going to do this shit all alone and end up nowhere. It's a good finesse, bro. Preach, brother. Keep it up. It was perhaps a friend or an advisor, somebody that was looking out for the family, somebody that was looking out for the group and said, hey, you know, I know of this boy over here. I know of this girl over here. This would make a perfect alliance. Let's get them together. Now, in 1959, there was a single event with about 100 people involved that would go on to change dating forever. And before I reveal what happened, I want to reveal the sponsor of today's video, Vitaman, 1959. So over at Stanford University, they took... Look at the look. Watch how it begins. Watch how the transition from coming together in a marriage to up our societal standing into this notion of love. Watch. And who gets most affected? 49 men and 49 women. And they started this project called the Happy Families Planning Services. They used a simple questionnaire and an IBM 650 to match those 49 men with those 49 women based on what they perceived to be good compatibility. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the first computer dating service. Six years later, over at Harvard, they took this to a whole other level. They called it Operation Match. They did about the same thing using a questionnaire and an IB. He doesn't go into the history when we switch. The marketing switched it to marriage for love. Damn, he missed a good point there. IBM 1401, but one small difference. They charged for the service. $3. And within six months, they had made $270,000. That's about almost $2 million in today's dollars. Over in France in the 1980s, Bruh. using the Minitel network, they started their first pink chat rooms. Basically, you had people talking, not even seeing each other. Again, the idea here was for people that wanted to meet and date. Now, the first dating site, kiss.com, wouldn't launch till 1994, but was match.com in 1995. Wow, Match.com was out since 95, dude? Whoa, oh my God. What were online dating rooms like back in 95? With your dial-up 56K modem. What? That really took online dating to a whole other level. And let's talk about specialty sites. So if you were Jewish, Yid.com founded in 1995. Shadi.com, an online wedding service founded over in India. Gaydar launched in 1999. The name says it all. Christian Mingle, 2001. If you want to break up your marriage, Ashley Madison. Soon we saw the rise of the apps. Grinder, Tinder, Bumble. And that takes us to today. So with all of these options, why are so many people giving up and walking away and saying, you know what? This just isn't worth it. Reason Social number media. one, there is no return on investment. So this quote from Noah right here, honestly, because it's way too much work and too little gain. We're expected to initiate, Perfect. start contact, ask them out, and sometimes pay for them. Women are expected to just show up. You're right. Facts. He, he just laid it out right there. The return on investment is horrendous. And not only that. We have retroactive consent today. And if she's drinking alcohol, she's no long, she does not have the ability to make the decision. She's inebriated. And you can go to jail, bro. If she had a drop of alcohol and goes back and says, nah, I was too drunk, you're done for. Right hand is easier to get enjoyment out of than fighting a losing cause. There you have it. Straight up, a lot of guys don't feel it is worth it the work. They would just rather have a relationship with Pamela Henderson. Next up, let's talk about how expensive it can be, especially if you're going out for dinner, maybe you're going to a movie, whatever it is you're setting up, you are most likely paying. I know a lot of guys go Dutch, but for a lot of guys that are paying, they're like, hey, it's just not worth it. It can easily go past $100, maybe even $200. If you're in New York City, you're out in Los Angeles, all of a sudden you find you're with somebody and they don't want to meet up again. They ditch you and you are stuck with the check. Reason number mm. three, she lies about her appearance. Okay, maybe she's just putting her best foot forward, but you could have sworn. MySpace angles. And now the advent of filters and the filters are so insane today. They have a default filter placed on the photo already that alters your bone structure on top of the 10,000 filters they can put on themselves. And you, you can hardly tell. The filters are getting so good at manipulating what a person looks like. It's practically 99% of the time you're getting catfish, boys. So many men go on dates and they meet the girl in person and they look at her and go, God damn it, got me again. The freak, $2. Thanks, brother. Riding those coattails. F the commies. FJB. <laughs> 
If you haven't, boys, subscribe on Locals as well. That's the best place to support the community and get access to exclusive episodes. We just shot one today, too. Born in the profile that she put 130 pounds and five foot five, not five foot three, 230 pounds. And there's a big Oof. difference there. I mean, it's usually not that extreme, but a lot of you guys have had that. In fact, I've had men tell me, a lot of my friends that are out dating, they're like, hey, I'll look at five to six photos. Hopefully she's got something up where somebody else took it. And then I can see her from an angle that, uh, yeah, isn't maybe so flattering. So I, I obviously when I use Tinder so often, let's put a chill song on. When I was in my Tinder escapades, boys, I had a little, if you didn't show me a body pic, I wasn't going on a date with you. I got burned once so bad. I got my space angled to death. And I went on a I went on a date with a secret willy. And I wasn't about to man the harpoons. Okay? And your boy said that's it to face shots. I'm never getting done again. These willies are too slick with it. So now, if I see you shoulders and up, I'm assuming you're fat. If you got all five picks, shoulders and up. You're a linebacker. I'm not getting God again. You can only play your boy once. I learned quick. And that's it. I need to see beginning picks. I need to see a dress that's curving your body. If I see any folds anywhere, your boy is out. I don't care. I'm going to assume you're photoshopping shit too. And I, I automatically knock down three, four points. Because you know the morning after... When all that shit is rubbed off on your pillow, it's looking nothing like her star pinned post on Instagram. Trash, bro. And I can see if I'm actually attracted to her. Next up, let's talk about the overinflated ego. So many guys listed this as, hey, this woman is used to being. By the way, on the Willie story, don't be afraid to walk away. I walked away. I've had conversations with friends that said, is it okay to walk away? Some guys stay and have the date, the drink or the dinner the entire time and then leave. They try to be courteous. What are you being courteous for, bro? You got lied to from the get-go. Just walk away. Be like, I'm not doing this. You don't look anything like your picture. You finessed me. I'm out. And walk away, dude. Protect your time. Being able to put up a profile and having a hundred guys within a day basically try to grab her attention. And uh, this isn't reality because... On the list, she's actually a four out of 10. And there's no way that oh. she should have this much attention. And it builds Perfect. up, it over, overblows her expectations Perfect. and what she thinks she deserves. Now, personally, I've been out of the dating scene for a long time. But all the research, everyone I've spoken to that's out there, they talk about this. How, as a guy, it's crickets. You're not getting anyone to respond. Especially if you're under, you know, what, six foot. If you don't have, you know, a lot of money. If you're not flashing. If you are not in that top 1%, you're not getting anything, it seems like, online. Versus women, and you can put up an average profile. And it seems like she's just getting slammed with, you know, guys that are just thirsty and hungry trying to get her attention. Throw on top of this a culture that says you deserve everything everything. You deserve the best. Go get it, yeah. queen. A lot of guys just feel that, hey, this has created a lot of women that have this mindset that, yeah, they're, oh, they expect way too much. The next reason why guys are giving up on dating, I am going to blame Chad. Yes, that top 1% of guys that seems to get all of the women online. It seems like that, yeah, that 1% is getting 99% of women online fawning after. Why is this happening? It didn't seem to happen in the past. And that is true to an extent. Let's talk about what the internet brought. It reduced friction to almost zero. So literally, you know, instead of having to go to a place and meet up when you have a limited group there and you've got to kind of make do with what is present, most of us simply go online and there is unlimited. By the way, online game sucks compared to approaching in person. Street game is the best, dude. It is more nerve wracking. It's true. To go approach someone in person, it's far easier to be disconnected and swipe right on a profile and it feels safer because they've accepted you already and then you meet them in person and you've already been pre-selected. It's nice. As opposed to a random approach. But street game, I'm telling you, you have the best opportunities to close. Right then and there, dude. N not only is it attractive, you just have to, okay. It's attractive because it, it displays confidence right off the bat. But not only that, they're able to, to uh, zero in on body language, on other cues that you can't otherwise when you're just doing this online swipe right. And her mind 
is already off in 10 different places with 10 different chads also messaging her and the only thing she has to differentiate between you and the chad is pictures and that's how she makes her decision but street game tremendous the only thing you have to watch out for is i guess being labeled a i don't know a creep or whatever but then again that just comes down to how your energy is you know shown to the woman what you say how you move around if you're acting weird you can give off the creep in celly energy really easy most men aren't going to give that just be respectful enough be playful do a few jokes man and see how it see how it rolls dude you have nothing to lose all she's going to either say is yes or no there's nothing wrong with being rejected if anything dude it builds character and we used to do this as as uh, high schoolers like the way we learned to talk to girls, we had a group and we would go to the mall back when malls was still the thing. And the guys in the group would purposely pick girls walking around. We would sit in the food court and they would purposely pick hot chicks for you to go talk to. And they would pick the hottest chicks. You had no chance of betting. Dude, you had no chance to get these numbers. They were just there to film you and watch you crash and burn and get rejected hard. And you had to learn. You had to go up to women and talk and be smooth and say some shit to make them laugh and at least get rejected in a nice way. Like, ha ha you're cute for a little high school boy, but we're, you're too young for me. You know what I mean? Dude, put yourself in the fire and you'll forge a sword that's worth wielding. Trust. Choice and to be able to go through that unlimited choice, you just need to flick your finger. So literally, uh, the friction is almost zero. Next up, out of the economics, we get the winner takes all. And this is where someone that is just slightly better than others is going to draw in the vast majority. Think about it. If you walk into a store and you got 500 bucks, do you want the second best, the third best, or the best product that you can get for your money? Maybe it's a phone, maybe it's a camera, whatever it may be. You want the best for your money. And that's the same with people online. Everyone wants to go for the best that they can get. But in a friction high situation, let's say you walk into a room and there are 20 people and there are 10 men, 10 women, and each of them have numbers on their head. There was a great experiment that did this. What's going to happen if you tell everyone, hey, match up with the highest number quickly? So the 10 is going to find either a nine or a 10. Everyone's going to gravitate towards those tens. They will be taken quickly. And then the eights, then the nines, then or the sevens, you, you get the point. It's just going to go down. If you are a one, if you are a two, if you are a three, you're going to find that everyone is turning away from you and you are going to learn that, hey, I'm not bringing or I'm not as attractive or I'm, there's just something about me that is turning off other people. And eventually you're going to look around, there's only going to be a set number of people left and you're going to want to pair up quickly so that you at least have someone to go with. I know it is cruel, but it's the way things are. But online, this has disappeared. So what you get is this top percentage has their pick. And the reality is a lot of these top guys, they're, they still want to eventually pair up perhaps, if they do want to pair up with someone that is at the same level and caliber. Now, being men, one of the things with guys is that they don't mind just a hookup for the night or for a couple nights, whatever it may be. And they'll st if no one's going to find out about it, yeah, she's a four, but no one's going to know, you know, I got nothing going on. Let's make it happen. But I, yep. And there it is. I told you the practice chicks, the wet willies, that men secretly harpoon for just to get off the, you know, ring rust. And it happens more than you think. Some of you men don't like to admit it, but you're harpooning these willies, stoning cave trolls, and you're not going to tell nobody because, you know, at the end of the day, bro, you got a dry spell and you got to break it and you got to get some abundance mentality. And sometimes you got to collect a flock of willies in order to get out there and get you a champion fish that you could display on the wall to all your homies right? It is what it is, dude. That's a thing with men. But what happens is the willies all of a sudden think they're champion fish that deserve to be placed on the wall and shown off trophies. And they're not. They're willies. They're cave trolls. And it don't work that way. But they don't know because they think a man has the same level of interest in them as they do in the men. They think they're going to end up marrying with the Disney happily ever after mentality they have. That's all it is. And that's why the game will never be fair to women who sleep around like men do.
what this does to uh, the other side is it sometimes gives them a false sense of, hey, I hooked up with a nine. I hooked up with a 10. This is what I deserve or I should end up with. And the reality is that was just a hookup for that other person. And it maybe inflated their ego to a level and makes it much more harder. Again, because they were just other nines that will continue to hook up with them. And they Pump find and five dumps. years down the road that, yeah, this is just taking, taking me down a path that now I can't even hook up with people that are at my same level. And to throw on top of that, let's talk. Yeah, bro, they get alpha widowed so bad because these willies are smashing these absolute specimen chads that know this is a done deal. I don't even have to put in work. She comes straight over, Glock, Glock 9000, kick her ass out. And he puts in work just to get his nut off. So then he's ready for the real, real bait fish. He's trying to catch an absolute prized marlin. And he's got a date with her tomorrow and he needs to get his nerves off. Yeah, it happens, bro. That's the way men are. But unfortunately, she's got a taste of Chad. And now as she dates a man within her real range. Emotional damage. And game over. Talk about the paradox of choice and why that's making dating even worse. Because if you only had 10 people that you could potentially date, okay, you know, you it's almost like an arranged marriage. You would say, you know, she's attractive enough or, you know, it's good enough. We're going to make this work. Let's build a life together. Thanks, Trap Accounting, for the $2, brother. Sometimes you have to take one for the team. No, I will not. Sorry. <laughs> we had specific soldiers with absolutely no standards that were ready to jump on all the grenade slash willies. The harpoons were already manned. Your boy wasn't doing it. No siree. That wasn't my job. And this is what happened for the majority of, I mean, the majority of people would marry somebody that was just within a couple of miles of them. And this is most recorded history. Now we've got, I mean, I met my wife and she's on the other side of the world. And I'll talk a little bit about that story at the end of this video, but uh, you know, most times that paradox of choice though comes with consequences because you are always wondering if you, you know you're in a decent relationship and it's good everything seems yeah the paradox of choice for women is crippling they again ask a woman what she wants to eat now ask a woman what man she wants to settle down with come on bro it's crippling when you have so many choices and you can nitpick every little detail from every single man you match and you concoct and stitch this perfect human specimen, Giga Chad. And then you, you start to get old enough to where you're running out of time, the clock starts ticking, and now you go, fuck, dude, I need to settle down. Right now, what do I do? Oh, snap. I can't get a Giga Chad to settle down. So I settle with Beta Bob and I'm always seething and angry about the one that got away. And I'm gonna whip Beta Bob. I'm gonna think of all the nights I couldn't get Giga Chad back into my bed. I'm gonna reminisce and sleep and dream about Giga Chad railing me out. Meanwhile, Beta Bob gets maintenance once a month sex, maybe a blowy for his birthday, just to keep him happy, dude. And that's the marriage trap. Nice guys or good men fall into because they're inexperienced and they have no idea the shit their women were up to while they were single, strong, independent boss babes. Because that's the culture today. Hunky dory, but you hear these stories about, oh, this other couple, they're traveling the world. They're infatuated with each other. It, the grass is greener on the other side. So because you have so many choices nowadays with online options, people oftentimes give up a good for the chance at what they perceive to be amazing. And this can lead to, I think, a lot of regret because they pass up or they give up on a relationship that was actually great, but they didn't see it because they were chasing something else. And let's talk about those filter factors. You have to go into this actually knowing what you like. And one of the reasons that a lot of guys are giving up on dating and, you know, they don't even know what they want. They, you know, I, a lot of guys say that women don't know what they want, but a lot of guys don't know either. And that's one of the more interesting things about talking and meeting with people in person as you engage with them, you spend more time with them, you start to discover the things that you want and what you don't want. One of the advantages, I think, of being a little bit older, especially if you pay attention, is you start to identify, hey, 
this is important to me and I'm not going to compromise here. But initially, you know, you got people that are going out there and saying, oh, I want someone to be this height or I want them to be, have this build. I want them to have these hobbies. I want them to live within this amount of distance from me versus, I mean, there's no filters. If you think about it for what type of relationship does this person have with their family and friends? But that's actually, I know for me, one of the biggest determinants when I met my wife, I was just really impressed with the way that she treated her family, the relationship we have with all of her friends. Uh, I didn't have the best relationship with my family and I knew I wanted to create a family. Like looking back, I, I can see that I saw that, but that's something that when you're going in and creating these filters, you initially don't know. And I've told you guys all the time, watch how she treats her father if he's present. Make sure her father's present. Watch the family dynamic between the husband and the wife. Watch if the wife berates the husband or she's compliant. I'm not going to use the word submissive because it's so inflammatory, but if she's compliant and has teamwork and qualities and supportive to the husband, you got a good girl, potentially. That is a call. That's what you call a prospect. That shows potential. Strong family values require a strong family. If your girl comes from a busted childhood, chances are she's not going to be a good prospect. It's not the end all be all. There are some incredible people that come from broken homes because they've had to grow up quickly and have had had time to self-reflect or had the God-given God ability to be introspective. Those people are rare though. Okay, for men that aren't experienced, it's a simple rule, dude. I had three of them. It was what she did or her boyfriend she'll do to you if she has a lot of guy friends. And what was my last one? I haven't been dating in a minute. So guy best friend, if she has guy friends, what she does. Oh, and divorced parents. Yeah, there you go. So that's like the three, the three little tenants you need to follow when you're meeting a woman is, are her parents still together? Right? It just saves you the trouble. Does she have a lot of guy friends? That's a weird red flag. She needs attention from men, especially if she says something like, I don't like girls. They're so dramatic. It's most likely she's the dramatic one and girls don't trust her. And what she does to her boyfriend in the past, she'll do to you. If she met you in certain contexts, like she still had a man and then she dumped him for you, you're going to get dumped for another man. If you find out that she was a serial cheater and like constantly broke his heart, etc., did all this crazy shit to him, was dramatic, was toxic. You're next in line for the toxicity, brother. Follow those three rules and you'll be good for the most, most of the time. They're not laws. They're just rules. They can be broken. Rarely, though. So Very we're rare. being drawn into identifying, you know, certain characteristics, which at the end of the day, do they matter that much? Now, this next reason why guys are giving up on dating, I don't think is necessarily bad. And that is there's less societal pressure from families, from friends, from, you know, just simply, you know, governments in general, they're not pressing this down except over in Singapore, but no, seriously, uh, you know, you don't have society as a whole frowning down upon the fact that people can be dating. They can actually be in a long-term relationship. They can have kids in those relationships without getting married. Um, you know, people having sex before marriage is not nearly, you know, as frowned upon as it used to be. And for a lot of people, this is a great thing. Tons of guys love the hookup culture. Personally, I do think that it would be great to be in a long-term relationship, and I'll talk about my stance on all this at the end of this video, but, um, you know, tons of guys out there say, hey, you know, this is even better for us because we don't have to, you know, commit to marriage and we get all the fruits. And of course, let's address the elephant in the room. Half of marriages end in divorce. So a lot of guys are like, you know, if the end goal is to get married only to have a 50-50 shot of it failing, why in the world am I even going down this path? Seriously. Eric, thanks, brother, so much for the five. Yeah, think about it. You have a 50% failure rate. Imagine imagine you talk to a financial investor. Imagine you talk to a businessman. Imagine you talk to anybody and you're pitching them an idea and the failure rate is 50%. How many of them will tell you that's a good deal? I read this comment by this guy named Dan Cody, and he said, how does being in a romantic relationship make my life better? I used to think of long-term committed relationships as the pinnacle of human experience, but in recent years, I've wondered. Now, my parents... 67% failure rate today. There you go. Nearly 70%. Unreal.
enjoyed a loving 55-year marriage, and that was my example. But when I compare long-term couples today to my dating experiences, we're on different planets. It used to be people grew up together. There's deep communication, trust, and affection. By comparison, people on dating sites are justifiably wary. It's a very long road to what exactly? Companionship? I've got that with good friends. Love? I've also got that with good friends. Sex? Okay, that may be an addiction, but loveless sex is somewhere between opportunistic at best and misleading at worst. It's hardly fulfilling, yet many women are looking for just that. I'm better off, at least for now, going to dinners, on bike rides, kayak trips, skiing, and to musical performances with my friends. And I have to admit, gents, as a married guy, I completely see Dan's point here. So all that being said, what if you want a long-term relationship? What if you want to get married? What if you want to date? how to make it better. Well, gents, my answer is if I know, but seriously, I don't have the solution, but I do have five kids and I want them to have loving, Damn. meaningful relationships. So this in general is going to be the advice I give them. First up, have your standards, know what's important to you. And on those areas, don't bend. That being said, when you find someone that you can build a life with, it's okay to compromise in certain areas. I know I used to be a very organized and I thought like incredibly, you know, a little bit OCD kind of person. My wife, not so much. And I've learned that I can live with, yes, a little bit of a messy house because there's so much other joy that is brought to us, just the messiness that is life. Next up, be the person that you would want to date. I'm not saying have a sex change here. What I'm saying though is be your best self. If you want to date someone that's in shape, then get yourself into shape. If you want to date someone that doesn't get drunk and crazy, well, don't be going out there getting drunk and crazy. The next tip, stay in touch with traditional matchmakers. No, I'm not talking professionals. I'm talking your parents. I'm talking your siblings, your friends, people you know at work. Those people right there have historically and for a long time been great sources of fun. You know, uh, that unfortunately, that's a bit of a boomer point from him because you can't ask people at work. You can't ask friends anymore. For the most part, I'm talking about the young guys here that are 20, 21, 22, 23. Your workplace is completely toxic. The femcentric ideals have absolutely exploded in the workplace. And you having this conversation we're having right now will get you literally kicked out of your job. You can't, you can't even, you can't voice your opinion as a man. And you cannot ask these people for dating advice because they themselves are participating in the in the social media, the hookup culture of dating apps, etc. And they're broken themselves. They can't give you. Most young people today have not been in a, in a relationship longer than three years. You think these people can give you advice on long-term intimacy, marriage? Most of them aren't even married. That's the truth. Most of them haven't been with somebody for five years, at least, man. If you're going to give advice, at least see somebody for five years straight and then tell us a bit of the longevity. Most of these people have like situationships. We're in the world of situationships and sugar daddy, sugar baby relationships. That's it. We're transacting money for intimacy more than we ever have in the history of society. And you're going to go and ask these people for advice? Fuck no. Hell no. Your parents, maybe, if they are still together, even then, the advice they give you doesn't really hold to the standards of society today, which have fallen off a cliff. I mean, yes, I know a lot of people are online dating, you're meeting people through all these apps, but that is still not even 30% of relationships. The other 70% are still met in these other ways, through church, through volunteer organizations. And it may not seem like it at times, but these matchmakers, these friends, your family, they are actually looking out for you. And they are kind of vetting these people. So all of a sudden they're saying, hey, there's this great girl, uh, you know her sister, but you know that she's back home from college or she's back from graduate school, you gotta meet her. This is all of a sudden. I don't know, bro, she's back home from college. You know what that means, boys. You know exactly what that means. We're getting a bit off mark on what he's talking about. If your girl's been to college and she's surrounded by the sorority, I'm telling you, be careful. Not all, but most. Be careful. He's giving us bad advice now. Can't, I can't agree with that part. Unfortunately, we're headed into the passport bros being a necessity for men in the future. 
If we continue on this strong boss babe independent queen mentality, we are headed towards a future where men are checking out into other countries. It's already exploding. We're already seeing women seething and bitter at men exercising their options overseas. Marriage with traditional minded women, starting families away from the toxic mentality of boss babes that bring you no value. Hmm. They're trying to make things happen. And the idea here is that, uh, yeah, she's not crazy, uh, or at least, you know, no one has been able to detect this so far. She's actually going to a decent school. She's got a good head on her shoulders. She's cute. At least that's what your mom says. So why not take them up on it? Guys, this is a great way to meet people. Pick up a hobby. Start swing dancing. Join a Dungeons and Dragons club. Yes. I'm all right, bro. He started strong, and then now he's giving us weird ass shit. Join Dungeons and Dragons. The fuck? <laughs> we have heard enough. All right, that was why men stop dating, and uh, by real men, real style. He's got three million views. I mean, you gotta you gotta keep the message PC enough at three million views, right? You can't be risking your channel getting super red pill. You can't be telling too much of the truth to the blue pills that follow you. I'm sure the man is selling some shit. There we go. 40% off store wide. Some stuff. You know what I mean? You got to you got five fucking kids to feed, brother. I understand. You can't be super real. Sell that shit. Dungeons and Dragons. Bruh. Come on, man.